Good morning and thank you for joining us for the Title II Part A Desk Monitoring Webinar. This will be about 20 to 25 minutes long. And we basically just want to look at these items. Uh, just a quick look at the desk monitoring selection process. Want to show you the self assessment tool and how uh, this will help you through the process and help you organize your information. Uh, how we would like you to upload your documentation and where to upload it. Want to look at the tool itself and specifically the areas of review. We have a timeline to kind of help keep the process and workflow going and structured. And then we want to be sure to provide you with our contact information and then just share some helpful hints that we have uh, learned along the ways along the path in doing this. Title II Part A monitoring is a requirement through ESSA and through the federal government. So it's not um, a negative thing. It's the purpose is actually to be helpful and assist districts and programs, help you to kind of take a closer look at your program. Make sure that it's doing what you want it to do. Make sure that it is effective for both students and teachers. There are several factors that weigh into how districts are selected for this. Sometimes it has to do with the allocation amount. Sometimes it has to do with how far in the process the application is um, towards being approved. Um, and most times it's just a matter of timing. So how long has it been since the district was assisted before? There are um, four areas we will look at, and I'm going to you know, look at those a little closer in, a, in just a minute. But we do hope that you will look at this as an opportunity rather than a burden. There will be some extra work for you involved, but we really feel like the benefits outweigh the work in terms of helping you enhance your Title II program to the best that it can be. I will say that the Department of Education in Kentucky is just wrapping up a federal audit um, that started uh, back in the winter and will be wrapping up in the in the spring of 2021. And I can honestly say that it was a positive experience. It helped us to see parts of our Title II program that we were doing well, and then it also helped us be aware of some um, areas where we could approve. And um, it, it, it really ended up being very beneficial to our program. And I hope that this will be beneficial to you and your district as well. So here are the four areas that we are going to review. Teacher certification, how your program is developed and implemented and evaluated, equitable services for private schools, and then financial management. You will get a link, if you have not already received it, to a SharePoint folder that's been set up with those four areas. Um, there's a folder for each. Your self-assessment tool will be in there, and also a link to this video will be in there um, that you can refer back to if needed. The directions are on the cover of the desk review tool. Very simple and hopefully easy to understand. There are going to be two types of assessment questions, some that will just require a checkbox for yes or no, and then some that are going to ask for just a very brief narrative. So this is an example of uh, what the some of it might look like that you would, you know, you can do whatever works best for you. If you want to put an X in there, if you want to shade the box, if you would prefer to print it and handwrite it, it really is um, up, to, up to you on how you would like to do it. But we do ask that you use this tool 
uh, as you go through the process and then submit this completed tool along with your documentation. So um, in this situation, you would indicate yes or no. And then here you're going to list the titles, the names of the documents that you upload to um, show or show evidence that this requirement is being met. In this type of section, you're going to put a very brief response in here to kind of describe how you're meeting this requirement. And then again, the names of the documents that you are uploading to support that evidence or to support the, um, the requirement. We do ask again that you complete each section on the self-assessment document. Um, we ask again that you name the document here exactly what it is named in the upload. So if it's called XY.106 2020 document here, that's the document we should find in the folder. Also want to point out that these are just suggestions on um, what documentation can be uploaded. We want you to feel free to submit evidence that you feel best represents your program. It might not be these, but it might be some of these. So um, please know that you have freedom to do that. And also, if four things are listed here, that does not necessarily mean that you have to upload four documents. You just need to really think about what best reflects your district's work and what you feel most confident represents your district's work. This is just an example of what this might look like. So you can see here that the documentation file name is Fall 2020 Lead Report. I've got a couple here in terms of right to request, and I've got one here in terms of notification that was sent out. These are the documents that should be uploaded into the teacher certification folder because that's the section we're working on. And when we click on teacher certification, we should see those identical named documents in that folder. This will make it easier for us, obviously, to match the documentation with the requirement. But we also hope it'll make it easier for you in terms of organizing all of your information. In the sections that ask for a brief response, we want you to really um, feel free to keep it brief. This does not have to be a big written essay or anything like that. But in this example, this is uh, the response that has been provided and then this is the documentation that supports the response and again all of these would be uploaded by the same name into the appropriate folder. If you have any questions at all on the uploading process on how the documentation file names should be uh, organized or anything like that, please do not hesitate to call us at any time. Want to take a look at each section very briefly. And again, if questions arise when you're working on this, uh, just please reach out to us and we will be glad to walk you through it. The teacher certification section is very brief. There's just three sections. And here, uh, or on this section, we are just asking you to show that your teachers are appropriately certified that all of your parents have been notified of their right to request information, and that in the event that you do have a teacher who is non-certified, and that but that has taught students for more four or more consecutive weeks, that you have notified families of, with that information. And please note here that non-certified teacher uh, can mean different things. It may be an emergency certified teacher. It may be a teacher that's just teaching out of content, or it may be a long term substitute. So the program development section is quite a bit longer, but of course that's the most important 
thing that we do with this audit is make sure that we are supporting you the best we can in making your Title II Part A program effective. The first two sections of the program development group uh, deals with shareholders and a needs assessment. So we uh, also are asking for the responses in this section, a brief description of how all shareholders in your district are involved, and then uh, documentation to support that. And then section B is how your needs assessment drives your Title II Part A plan. Section C is about um, how the district prioritizes funds to schools that have the greatest needs. And then section D and the following sections may or may not be applicable to your district. So you will see that if, if this one is about class size reduction, if you do not utilize funds for that, you'll just put in A and go on to the next part. If you do utilize class size reduction funds, then you'll describe briefly how um, it is connected to the needs of your district and the evidence that you have used to show that is effective. E and F are the same, although instead E talks about professional learning and then F is looking at retention and recruitment. Again, just a brief description if funds are used for that and the supporting documentation. Section G talks about um, the district's professional growth and improvement plan. This is where you would document how you support teacher growth and then how you support new teachers, either new to your district or new to the profession. Section H is how you um, ensure that staff members who are paid out of Title II Part A funds are working in appropriate areas. And by this, this is typically going to be your instructional coaches. If you use Title II Part A funds to compensate them, that they are in fact in doing the duties that are shown in your approved GMAP application. And then the last two parts of this uh, section deal with kind of some policy. Number one, or section I, I'm sorry, is how the Title II Part A coordinator works and communicates with schools to make sure their programs are being developed appropriately. And then Jay talks about how the Title II Part A program is annually evaluated for effectiveness. The participation of private schools section is just all on one page because it's pretty cut and dried and this is fairly consistent across all federal programs in terms of requirements. If you do not have any participating non-public schools, then you will just check no or NA and skip this section. If you do have participating non-public schools, then you will complete this, but this documentation is probably very uh, readily available because it, it's going to talk about your consultation packet, uh, how you're communicating with the districts, that there's there are procedures in place for equipment retrieval, um, that administrators are aware of complaint procedures. Um, so anything like that, if you have participating non-public schools, would go in this section. The last section is looking at the financial management of your Title II Part A program. For Section A, basically what we're looking for is an alignment between your MUNIS report, your most current MUNIS report, and your approved GMAP application budget. So if a amount is budgeted in your approved GMAP application is that same amount shown in your current MUNIS. And the same thing with the codes. If you have opened codes in your MUNIS, are those codes also shown 
in your GMAT budget application. So that is that is the main point of this section A here is budget uh, GMAT budget and munis alignment. B and C are um, related to staff members that are paid either partially or fully from Title II Part A funds. So um, documentation here showing that this is kept track of either monthly or on a semi-annual basis based on how that person is paid and that also it aligns with the full-time equivalent that's in your approved application. If you don't have um, any salaries or people paid out of Title II Part A funds, you would just simply put um, check no or NA for this. The last section here is um, a little bit about district procedures. Uh, a section D is ensuring that there are separate munis, re munis report for two part A expenditures, um, that there are procedures in place to ensure that there are solid internal controls for disbursement of funds and that um, the your Title II Part A funds are used to supplement regular district activities and not supplant. This is the timeline that we have drawn up to hopefully keep uh, this moving forward. We do want to say that we understand that things happen and um, if there is any type of um, changes or accommodations that you need just to communicate with us on the front end and we will do our best to work with you through all of it. But we would like to have everything uploaded and ready to go from you by November 13th. That'll give us a month to go through it and then get back to you of kind of what we learned about your district. And then that'll give us all both the month of January to uh, work back and forth if needed to just clarify everything and make sure that the program's headed in the right direction. Just a few things to think about when you're going through the process. Um, we suggest that you complete the self-assessment at the same time you're uploading the documentation, kind of almost like a checklist. And then at the same time, if you don't already have some organization system in place, maybe put something together because um, it I think would help the your program in the future. You'll have easy access to what you've done in the past and it's just a good way to keep all the documentation together. I can say that that was another thing that we learned um, uh, another positive from our federal audit in terms of how we organize our system and, and information and it has made things run a lot smoother as we've moved into FY21 having those having that organization in place. Again, remember to label each document with the same name that it is labeled as in SharePoint. So whatever you have named it in your self assessment tool or on your self assessment document tool, it has that same name in, in SharePoint. Um, definitely want to point out that documentation may used be used in several different areas. So do not feel that you have to come up with something new for each area. Uh, a MUNIS report is a good example. You will probably use that same MUNIS report in, in a variety of places and that is totally OK. Do not feel like you have to reinvent something or come up with something new so because that that's not a problem please feel free to call on us at any times but also don't hesitate just to communicate um, with us if you need flexibility with the timeline if you have questions if you come across something that you are are seeing that may not may not be in place in your district that is what this process is for it is is to help you take a closer look um, at some things maybe that need to be worked on and uh, for us to help you with that work. 
So do not hesitate at all to communicate with us at any time, um, regardless of what it you know, may be about. Here is our contact information. Um, I am Chris Jarbo and um, Kathy, Vicki and Sean are my team members. That is my phone number, but um, it will uh, reach any of us if, if needed. And um, you will get an email from each of us personally uh, if you know to let you know who which consultant is kind of in charge of monitoring your district. So I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to the webinar and again please do not hesitate to call us at any time and we look forward to working with you. Thanks.